Statistics and Excel. Histograms with different bucket sizes. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, and looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. So you can start with just a blank worksheet. But if you do have access to this workbook, there's three tabs down below. We got the example, practice, and blank. Example, answer key, practice tab, having pre-formatted cells in it. So you can get right to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab, just having the data in it so we can practice formatting cells in Excel as we work the practice problem. Let's take a look at the example tab. In essence, looking at the end result, we're gonna be sorting our data. We're gonna imagine this is data of wage data for like a corporation, for example. And then we're gonna make multiple histograms from that data set so we can focus in on how to adjust the histograms and mainly on the buckets so we can see what happens if we change the bucket size the bucket size is going to be quite important when you're trying to visualize your data in the format of a histogram. So let's go to the tab, uh, the blank tab, where we just have our data. Now remember that if you don't have this data, you can use some of the methods we talked about before. You can look for some data uh, for wages if you so choose. You can just type in this data set if you would like to just simply type in the exact numbers we have, or you can use some of the methods that we talked about in prior presentations to build a data set. So once we have the data in the system, I'm gonna format the entire worksheet like I do basically every time, selecting the triangle to select the entire worksheet, right-clicking, and then I'm gonna go to the format cells. And I like to go then to the number group. We're in the, I usually go to currency, bracketed numbers are negative numbers are bracketed and red with no dollar sign. And then I don't need the decimals at this point because we're dealing with data that's basically whole numbers. So I'm gonna remove the decimals as the default for my entire worksheet and then say, okay. So now it formatted it in a numbers type of format with a comma in the thousands position. I wanna put a header up top and make this into a table and then sort the data from top to bottom. So I'll scroll in a little bit. I'm currently at 190, holding control, scrolling in on the wheel. So now I'm at 220. Now remember to put a header, I need to put a row above this or a cell above this. The easiest way to do that is to select the entire row. But if I had something over here, for example, that might not be what I would want to do because it would push this down. So let's try the other method of doing that this time. I could select one cell, right click on that cell and insert. And I have an extra step because now it needs to know where, which way I want to push the cells. And in this case, I want to push the cells down. And so then I could say, okay, it pushes these cells down without disturbing the data on the right. All right, let's go ahead and type in wages. That's going to be my header. I'm going to tell Excel it is a header by, say, centering it, home tab, alignment, center. You might underline it or something like that too. I'm also going to select the entire data set and embolden it home tab, font group, bold it, just so it might be easier to see in a screen recording. So you may or may not need to do that. I'm gonna put a table into this like I usually do with my data sets, putting my cursor in the data. I could put it anywhere in the data because there are no blank areas in it. And then go to the insert tab up top, go to the tables group, and then add the table. And the dancing ants are doing their mamba dance around the, around the, proper area so i'm going to say okay there is our table we now have this nice drop down up top so the next step is often to sort to the data so i'm going to hit the drop down or just tap on it i'm not going to hit it too hard i'm not going to break it or anything it's going to go from let's take it from z to a we're going from z to a and so there is our breakdown of the data so now let's just go ahead and start building our histograms and, and then we'll adjust some of our histograms so to select the data, one way to do it is I could put my cursor up top and select the data this way. And then I'm going to go into the insert tab, as we saw in prior presentations, the charts. And remember, we're not looking at the bar column, the bar charts. We're looking at the histograms here. 
and that will make the buckets, right? So that this, the whole point of the histogram is it makes these buckets. So I'm gonna add the histogram. We have a default histogram, which is usually pretty good. I mean, they, they usually, they usually you know, uh, do the histogram fairly well. So if I look at what it gave me here on the default histogram, we could say, all right, uh, let's go ahead. So here's our buckets down below. Let's click on, the buckets are really the main thing most of the time that we're focused on. So let's click on those buckets. And then I'm gonna go to the, uh, this symbol and then the axis options. So we have uh, axis by category. So we, we're, which doesn't, isn't appropriate for us because we're looking at actual numbers. We've got the automatic buckets that are being put in place here. And the bucket size then, if I, if I look here, it's kind of hard to see, but because it's on automatic and this is grayed out because you're not typing into it, but this default is at that 3,400 and then nine buckets. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine buckets and the 3,400. Now we can customize this by changing either the bin width or the number of bins. Either one will, will uh, change the, the buckets, right? Either, either of those will, will change the other one, right? If, in other words, if I add more bin width, it's going to change the, the number of bins. So for example, if I go into here and I say, I wanna make this uh, 2000, then it's going to change the number of bins to 15. So now we have 15 bins that went up. If on the other hand, if I went back down and I say I want the number of bins to go back down to like 10, notice this number up top is at that 1933. It's going to change that to now 2,900. And now if I, if I want to refresh this to what it was in the automatic, I could always just simply go back to the automatic and then it goes back to its default position. Now you'll recall, we talked a little bit about this before with the overflow bin and the underflow bin. So we can kind of group together these outliers uh, at the far ends. So now just note that if I go down here to this number tick mark, if we have the categories, usually we're looking at our numbers of the categories. But if I hit the drop down, you can also say if it was uh, general currency accounting, if it's date, time, percent, uh, function, scientific, text, and so on. So uh, in some cases that might be useful. You can also take away the comma if you so choose in the buckets, if you want the commas gone for whatever reason for formatting purposes. By, for, and then uh, negative numbers, the formatting of negatives, we don't have any formatting uh, of the negatives. But usually most of your formatting is going to be up top here. Now you can also adjust this column so this column has been chosen. If I click on that column, once again, I get my information on the right. I'm gonna to go to the tab or this icon on the right for the access uh, options. And usually the major options you're looking at are the minimum, which is the auto and the maximum. So it picked up here from zero uh, to 30 as, as what it's gonna be counting up from. Now then we also said if I close this back out, that remember if you're clicked on the chart itself, if I click off the chart, these two items are gonna be gone, right? So if I remove them, they're gone. If you're looking for those two tabs, you have to be on the chart. Then you've got those two tabs where we have the add the chart elements. So this is one place we can go to kind of add those chart elements, the axis uh, titles and the date labels and so, so forth the quick layout options that we have here, right? So those are pretty nice, you know, quick adjustments to the chart, the formatting of them, which you can also kind of do yourself if you want to do your own formatting, the colors of the, of the graphs up top, and then your default uh, formatting this way of the charts, which again gives you kind of another formatting. You've got your data up top, so here's our 